Well, well, howdy. Well, now, ain't that handy? Stop, Paul. Way the road takes a bend in here, runs right by the front door. <laughs> no, Mr. Clapper, this is your driveway. It goes with the house. Is this buying a high Oh, yes, indeed. It was built by John Barrymore, one of our finest actors. Pretty fair stonemason, too. <laughs> hey, Jed! This here is dandy soil. Fine, Granny. We'll commence plowing tomorrow. But this is Beverly Hill. Dirt is dirt. <laughs> yes, I know, but... Why don't we look around inside, eh? Well, here we are. I hope you're going to like this place I picked out for you. Maybe a trifle larger than what you're used to. But I feel a man with $25 million in my bank should live in a manner that... Come in, come in, this is your home. As I say, it may be a bit more than you're used to, but I'm sure you'll be comfortable. Now, my secretary will be over right away to help you with the hiring of servants or whatever problems you may have. She's a very efficient girl, Miss Hathaway. Jed? Jed? <laughs> Jethro fetching my stove so, so I can get some vittles to cook in. Oh, you have a beautiful stove. Thank you. Fetch it in, Jed. You scare up some wood, Ellie. No, no, I mean you have a stove already installed in the kitchen. Where's that? I'll show you. Excuse me. Ellie, you go with Granny. She'll still need you to fetch some wood. Sure, Pa. Uncle Jed, guess what? There's a whole nother house up here. <laughs> guess who'll come down from there? Like as not that belonged to somebody else. <laughs> Darn. This is your kitchen. Oh, and, and here's the stove. The last word in food preparation. And speaking of food, uh, You'll find everything you could possibly want stored right in here. See? Huh? <laughs> well, I'll leave you ladies to your culinary delights. Au revoir. Bon appétit. Talks gibberish. <laughs> You've set a great deal of store in this year. Stove, Granny. Well, we'll see. Ellie, you run out and fetch some wood. I'll get a fire to going in here and we'll see. Pedro, I hope it's all right for you to be missing school. Oh, sure, Uncle Jed. They ain't straight in the fifth grade. You're in the fifth grade already? Starting this year. <laughs> Don't seem like no time at all since I went with your ma to get you started in the first grade. You was six years old. No bigger than that. <laughs> we drove clean over to Oxford so you could go to the same school your pa went to. You wouldn't know that town today, Uncle Jed. Oxford? Yes, sir. Well, that town has growed and growed and spread out and built up and, and just kept getting bigger and bigger. Where today, well, I bet you there must be at least three or four dozen people living there. <laughs> a place like that's all right to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any assistance? No, thank you, Mr. Drysdale. Uh, we're just talking about Jethro here getting back to school. Oh, well, we have some excellent educational facilities out here, Mr. Crabbit. Where do you go to school, Jethro? Oxford. Oxford. Yeah, you see, uh, Jethro's ma, that's my cousin Pearl. She married an Oxford man, so naturally Jethro, he goes to school there, too. I'm the champion crawdad eater. At Oxford? <laughs> Jethro put away three buckets of crawdads. Four. <laughs> and he's learned to cipher and everything. Cipher some for Mr. Drydale. One and one's two. <laughs> two and two's four. Four and four is eight. I have to take off my shoes to get any problem. No, 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 no. I'm sure we're thinking of two different Oscars. You see, there's one that's very, very famous and, and very old. That's where Jethro goes to school. Been there since pioneer days. That's how come it got its name. 
It's where the oxen used to ford the river. <laughs> Folks took to calling it oxen ford and later on got shortened to oxen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be running. Oh, by the way, here are your keys. My secretary should be over very soon. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Drysdale, for everything you've been doing for us. Oh, it's my pleasure, Mr. Clavett. You see, I'm not only your banker, I'm your next-door neighbor. Well, say, I ain't that nice. Well, now, why don't you bring your missus over tonight for supper, and I'll have Granny womp up a mess of grits and hog jowls. <laughs> well, you see, right now my wife is in Boston. Well, oh, that's too bad. When should she be back? Not too soon, fortunate. <laughs> I'll see you later. Hmm? Well, thank you, Mr. Drysdale. Long. Uncle Jed, you reckon one of these days I can have me a little bitty old taste of Granny's moonshine? I just threw. You know the family rule about Granny's moonshine? You get your first taste on your wedding day and not before. Well, Uncle Jed, that might be an awful long time. I ain't even got me no sweetheart. How come? Why, back home, every time I get me a girl, one of them there big fellas would take her right away from me. <laughs> Maybe out here in Beverly Hills. Oh, could I please have the act? I gotta split some wood for Granny. Bet you, Jethro. Ain't this place got a wood pile? Not that I can find. But I found a whole row of black old dead tree trunks. Pretty near as high as this high. Is it kind of big for you to tackle? Well, shucks, no, Paul. They're only this big around and all trimmed and top and strung together with the black rope. So as no matter which one you cut, the others keep it from falling. Somebody had a right smart idea there. Just the same, I think I'd rather have Jethro do the cutting. Oh, Paul, let me. Oh, cutting trees and chopping logs ain't no work for a girl. I'm just as strong as Jethro. Because you ain't neither. I am so. You ain't neither. I am so too. You want to wrestle. Darn too. <laughs> now, here, here. That ain't no fair fight. Somebody's going to get hurt. Now, yeah, you see, you're getting too rough. Jethro. Person can get crippled from a hole like that. Get up from there. I can't, Uncle Jeff. <laughs> You turn him loose and get up from there before I take the strap to the boot. Now, here, you get out there and chop down one of them tree trunks and saw Granny some nice logs. Yes, sir, Uncle Jay. Could have whooped you if you hadn't tripped me. Okay. Come back here and sit down. I want to talk to you. Whooped him fair and square, and I'll do it again. Uh, you won't. That's what I want to talk to you about. Ellie Mae, you're getting too big to wrestle with boys. I'm as big as Jethro. <laughs> big that way, I mean, uh, growed up. You're a young lady now. You gotta start minding your manners and fixing yourself up real nice and wearing dresses. Paul, folks would call me a sissy. It ain't sissy for girls to act like girls. You see, Ellie? I raised you like a boy, and I was wrong to do it. I reckon every man liked to have a son, and you was my only young'un. And when your ma passed away, I just decided to turn you into a boy. By the time Granny could come to help out, you was too wild to tame. By thunder, you could outrun, outclimb, outfight, and outshoot every boy in them hills. The okay, can, Paul. Yeah, but it ain't fitting. It ain't right for folks to go against nature. Now look at old Duke. Reckon we could turn him into a cat. Of course not. That's right. Because nature made him into a dog. It's the same way nature made you into a girl. And lately she's getting more and more positive about it. You mean my ears is grown? <laughs> no, nothing like that. You're pretty. Oh, Paul. I know you don't like it when I say that, but you like it when the young fellas around here come in saying it, and they will. Only they'll probably be using words, fancy words I won't even understand. But Ellie Mae, ain't nobody can ever tell you how pretty you really are, Sidney. You're the living picture of your mom. Still 
dear. I thought you were going up to the Clavin estate. I didn't think it prudent for us both to be absent simultaneously. In the event of crises... The I... only crises you have to worry about right now is keeping Mr. J.D. Clampett happy. Now, get up there. Tell me, how did you like the flamingos? <laughs> what flamingos? I thought pink flamingos around the swimming pool would add a rather elegant touch. <laughs> Mr. Clampett is not a man educated to elegance. That will take time. Right now, there are more pressing problems. Of course, getting settled, the servant problem. Well, whatever they are, just get up there and solve them. Now, J.D. Clampett is this bank's largest depositor, and I'm making his satisfaction your responsibility. I accept the mantle of responsibility with which you have cloaked my shoulders, and I shall so conduct myself that if this great financial institution shall last a thousand years, people will still say, this was their finest hour. <laughs> Andy Wood, all right. Got a lot of pitch and tar in it. Ought to burn real good. Yeah. <laughs> that flimsy grate holds up. Granny. Granny. <laughs> this is the top of that tree trunk. The one I should split it up to. No, just leave it outside. Yes, sir. <laughs> this place ain't even got a wood box. Yeah, folks don't need much wood out here. Remember what Pearl said? It don't get cold. Yeah, I remember. It might not get cold in the day, but it sure freezes solid at night. How you know? I show you how I know. Every bit of food in this here storage bin is frozen harder than a rock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Might have been skinned hard. <laughs> I'll be doggone. Take me two days to thaw out that ham before I can ever cook it. <laughs> People ought to know better than store food up against the north wall. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll dig us a root cellar and we put all this stuff in it. <laughs> Get through. Go on out there and catch us a chicken. Okay, Uncle Jack. How you know we got chicken? At least this size is bad to have chickens. You know, I'm froze. Find a chicken. I found something. I ain't sure if it's a chicken, a goose, a duck, or what. Where is it? I couldn't catch it. That thing can outrun a jackrabbit. There ain't no goose or duck. Must be a chicken. If it is, I was right about things growing bigger out here. That thing was this high. A chicken? Ah, get through. Honest, it's got legs this long. Give it on the drumstick. Drumstick ain't much. Whoever gets that neck is eaten from now on. Commences <laughs> here and runs plumb up to here. You ain't forgot what I said about Granny's jug of liquor. So you ain't been to Granny's jug. You have your in for it. Honest, cross my heart. Where'd you see this chicken? Down by the cement pond. <laughs> cement pond? Uncle Jed, that pond is the fanciest thing you ever did see. Why, they are steps. So the cattle can walk right down into it and get a drink. <laughs> and up at one end, there's a lady standing there made out of rock. And she's pouring water out of a jar right into that cement pond. Oh. <laughs> well, that's how come that big old pink chicken to get away from me. Flew right over the top of that there rock lady, landed in that pond, and swam like an otter. <laughs> Just a flapping them big old pink wings and hollering. What color did you say that chicken was? It's pink. <laughs> Ain't I told you that stuff would stunt your growth? Miss <laughs> Granny, I didn't. I didn't touch a drop. You and me is going to the woodshed. Nah, well, Jethro, you swear to be telling the truth. So help me, Jefferson Davis. You turn your hat off when you speak to the president. Well, he ain't president no more. I'll have no Yankee talk in my church. 
kitchen. Now, Jethro, you and me is going back out there and corner that chicken. Granny, you get the fire to go. Billy B, you sweep up out front and keep your eyes open for that Miss Hathaway. I'm counting on her to take you in hand and get you in the right kind of clothes. Come on. Executive secretary to Mr. Drysdale, and you, I take it, are a domestic of some sort, cleaning girl, housemaid. Just what are your duties with Mr. Clapper? Well, he sent me out here to sweep up, but he said you'd take me in hand and get me in the right kind of clothes and everything. Indeed, I shall. We have a complete servant's wardrobe from chef to chauffeur. Come with me. <laughs> what in the name of Thomas Chippendale? Is this? Has Mr. Clapper seen that this disgraceful and unsightly mound of debris? Oh, yes, ma'am. This is all here. Oh, what, what charming antique. Just like he said, Jeffrey. Rock lady pouring water into a cement pond. Yes, sir. And over there's where I seen that great big pink chicken. Only thing is, it don't sound like a chicken. It makes a kind of hollering noise. <laughs> <laughs> Reckon you'd make a holler and noise, too, if you was to lay an egg like that. Man, oh, man. That's what I call an egg. And you won't have to worry about food now. Will she cook this? <laughs> All the smoke. Stove don't work. <laughs> Probably just a stuffed up flu. Ain't got a flu. Ain't even got a stove pipe. <laughs> well, I'll get the shovel and a hoe and rake it out of there. <coughs> hey, you keep this egg. <laughs> just like everything else out here. Froze solid. <laughs> Oh. Just a moment. Yes, sir. Now I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, that was my pa. I take it he's a gardener. Oh, yes, ma'am. Pa just can't wait to commence gardening. Perfect. However, as though I admire his enthusiasm, I must forbid him access through the main entrance. <laughs> now, tell me about the rest of the staff. Is there a chauffeur? A what? Someone who does the driving. Oh, yes, ma'am. That's Jethro. Of course, I don't reckon he can stay around very long. He's got to get back to Oxford and go to school. Oxford? <laughs> he attends Oxford University? Well, he just calls it school. Paul went to school there, too. Oh, yes. Old school time. Great pride, those Oxford men. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't stop before. Granny was having trouble in the kitchen. Paul, do I have to wear this year's stuff that Miss Hathaway... No, Hathaway's... no, there can be no appeal from Mr. Clampett's orders. Thank you, ma'am. Glad to see you taking the firm hand. I have him made. That's right pretty. Makes you look taller. She's got me walking on pegs. Uh, well, run in and show Granny. And uh, get rid of those old clothes, dear. <laughs> Granny, I presume, is the cook. Yes, ma'am, but she ain't too happy about it right now. I shall deal with her directly. Now, let's see. Maid, gardener, cook, chauffeur. Oh, uh, I understand Jethro is an Oxford man. You bet he is. I'm uh, quite anxious to meet him. I don't blame you. Fine-looking young fella. Single, too. And he's on the lookout for a girl. <laughs> I'm only interested in the intellectual rapport which I would naturally have with an Oxford man. I presume he went to Eton as a boy. If I know Jethro, he went to Eton the minute he was born. Yes, of course. I suppose his father matriculated him. I kind of think maybe it was his mom. Oh, well, no matter. At any rate, 
He's an eating man. That he is. Matter of fact, Death Row won the eating championship. Oh, no. What was he champion of? Eating. <laughs> yes, I, I know. But what was it? Cricket? Oh, no, no. It was Crawdad. <laughs> I don't think even Jethro would eat crickets. I was referring to the game. Kids, kids, where's the axe? I bet you, Granny, you talk to Miss Hathaway. And just why does Cook need an axe? I've hit this with everything I could lay a hand to. I even whomped it with an iron skip. You are supposed to hit it with a croquet mallet. All right, where is it? I don't think I'll tell you. There is a time for work. And a time for play. <laughs> now then, what are we cooking for Mr. Clampett? Well, I don't know what you're cooking him, but if he wants any vittles from me, somebody better shoot a possum. Possum? You got a better idea? But of course, a nice big fluffy souffle. All right. You shoot it and you skin it. <laughs> you don't even know what a souffle is. What kind of a cook are you? I'm a cook with a stove that don't draw. Food that's froze solid, chickens that can't be caught, eggs that can't be broke, and a smart alecky city woman telling me my business. That's what kind of a cook I am. Mind your tongue, little woman. I can have your job. You sure can, and the sooner the better. Jack's <laughs> coming and just wait till you see what he's got. Thank heaven. Now I can have an intelligent conversation. <laughs> My granny, I caught that big chicken. I hope it ain't as tough as a day. That is a flamingo. Oh, no, ma'am. That's my nephew, Jethro. Jethro, <laughs> say hello to Miss Hathaway. I didn't mind him. <laughs> this is the thing, dangest chicken you ever did say. You even go to school at Oxford? Yes, ma'am. I'm in the fifth grade. Stop bragging and break that chicken's neck. Billy Bay! No, stop, you mother! Don't harm one feather of that beautiful bird. I've taken just about as much as I'm going to take from you. Yeah, Granny. Haley, you get the fire going under the big kettle outdoors. Young lady, where is your maid's uniform? I ain't gone away. Oh, yes, you are. No, I ain't. Oh, yes, you are if I must subdue you forcefully. I wouldn't try hey, that. Don't! 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 Come on, let her up. Get off of her. You are the stars. All of you. That fire. I am the most incompetent, insubordinate, belligerent group of domestics. It has ever been my misfortune. Away. Ah, Chief. You're just in time to help me take disciplinary action. You're fired. I've already told them. Not them, you. These people are the clampets. Clampets? Yes, that's right. Now go back to the office and pick up your severance pay. You are through. Now, Mr. Drysdale, uh, hold on a spell. I reckon there's been a kind of a misunderstanding. But this little lady's been a right big help to us. Why, she fit in just like one of the family. Matter of fact, her and me is going out hunting. Ain't that right, Miss Hathaway? <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, Jethro, you can type that. Take chicken back out of the cement pond. <laughs> We're going out and shoot us a nice, big, fluffy souffle. <laughs>